When I get fast, the world gets slow. Every single person who is a part of the Super Smash Brothers Melee community leaves an impact on our community. Maybe your impact to the scene isn't as big as a tournament like Genesis, but your imprint is just as visible in someone else's eyes. Everybody adds something in different ways, whether we are conscious of those additions or not. Maybe that advice you offhandedly gave to someone at the weekly inspired them to come back week after week. Maybe that one fest you held in your basement was the first time someone felt a part of the community. Or maybe your encouraging YouTube comment actually made someone want to learn more about this game. And maybe, just maybe, you helped someone find their home in this community. The two decade mark of grassroots melee tournaments is right around the corner, and while things like Slippy have us look excitedly towards our future, we want to stare into the rear view mirror for a second and appreciate the legacy and birth of the things that have been completely ingrained in our community. Familiar scenario, have you ever been discussing the current ongoings of the melee scene with someone, and then your other friend who doesn't follow melee just has that what the fuck are they even talking about look? Being on the outside of a conversation involving Melee, whether it's your friends talking about Gama results or watching Melee on Twitch for the first time, can be overwhelming. That feeling of not understanding what you're watching or hearing is most likely because the terms we use as a community can be completely undescriptive and literally 15 years old. Whether they were self-titled after the old school player that it was once tied to, or it's just a funny joke that someone said in 2006, these terms and phrases have taken on a life of their own and are now just words that have become a part of our vocabulary. Commentary is a conversation, and by knowing these terms, you can feel a part of that conversation. These phrases are used by everyone in our scene, regardless of how long ago the initial story took place, but more importantly, they spawned living expressions that are constantly repeated and stand as someone's impact and legacy in this community. One asterisk on this one though, we plan on doing a separate video specifically covering famous techniques named after melee players, so if you're mad about something like Hackstash or Scarjub being left off, fear not, they might be coming up soon. The snow wiener combination is the actual number one in this video, and here's 10 iconic techniques or phrases in Super Smash Bros. Melee. Shouts out to these people for the video idea, subscribe for weekly Melee content, and number 10, tournament winner. Tournament winners are a perfect example of you and the Melee commentators being in on the bit, but plenty of people have watched a Melee stream and just assumed that tournament winner is a good thing. Tournament winner is this. This is not a good thing. Well, it's usually not a good thing, but then it's kind of a niche thing and Bowser remains shut up. The act of tournament winnering from ledge is when you panic hit Y or tap up first while attempting to ledge dash, thus getting a tournament winner. It is called tournament winner because many last stocks, game fives, or as the name suggests, even grand finals have been decided with someone capitalizing on the other person's tournament winner. It kind of summarizes that shaky, nervous feeling you can get while playing this game in high pressure scenarios, and everyone, I mean everyone, has had their fingers slip on the controller once or twice. The phrase is undoubtedly not very intuitive, and key members of our scene have specifically called this term out as being a weak link of common terms used among commentators. While we're not gonna die on the tournament winner hill, we will die on the melee terms hill. Are some of them counterproductive? <laughs> yeah. But by understanding this game's general lingo and terms used on commentary or at events, you add a layer of understanding about this game, but more importantly, about this community. If a chess commentator had to consistently explain what a Sicilian opening was in Grand Master Dittos, the broadcast wouldn't be the chess commentator giving their expert opinions on the match, but instead just giving a beginner's lesson to anyone watching. Could we pick and choose our phrases better? Yeah, but at this point, a lot of these terms are just ingrained into this community to the point where it has become our language. Number nine, Tipman. Now, Tipman isn't the most widely used phrase nowadays, and while that could be because of the lack of current top Ganon mains, it is for sure worth covering in our eyes. If you happen to catch a Ganondorf player on a stream setup and said Ganondorf player goes for an edge guard, there's a very good chance you'll hear the commentators say something along the lines of, Oh, I just had Tickman spike. 
The Tipman is specifically using Ganon's reverse up air as an edge guard, and while Falcon's up air now shares the same nickname, the Ganon player who originated this term should probably get a little bit more credit nowadays. From 2005 to 2007, a player named Tipman would make a decent argument for being the best Ganondorf player in the world, still a couple years before Kage's third place finish at ROM 2. While Tipman did not travel much in his peak, and you might think his couple placements at MLG are his claim to fame, a certain video might have cemented his legacy in this community a bit more. Triforce of Power is a combo video starring Titman, the player, and definitely also Titman, the reverse up air move. This combo video was posted before YouTube was the standard, even with the version posted in 2006 being an upload. Combo videos like Titman's Triforce of Power were some of the first combo videos to really pave the way for the format's place in the melee scene in general and debatably create fan favorites in this way for the very first time. We can assure you that a couple old school heads still hold Titman as their favorite Ganondorf player ever, and whether completely serious at first or half jokingly 10 to 15 years later, Ganon mains have thanked Mr. Titman every time they edgeguard with their character. Titman stopped attending bigger tournaments sometime after 2009, and coincidence or not, Kage's previously mentioned success at Revival of Melee 2 was also the last tournament Titman seriously competed at for a very long time. Titman returned around 2017 and has infrequently made appearances in his home state of Florida, but his legacy, whether consciously or not, is carried on by folks commentating and playing and Ganondorf sets everywhere. Number 8, PC Drop. PC Drop sounds like a Halo 2 movement technique. PC Drop sounds like the thing that makes your gamer computer run at optimal speeds. PC Drop sounds like the ending trick at the Battle of Barracks Championships rounds. PC Drop sounds cool. And what a fitting name for a cool player. PC Drop is the act of quickly grabbing a ledge via the momentum of your turnaround frames when walking. Basically, walk, walk, turn around. What is the script? Wacky voice, whoa. Basically, walk, walk, turn around, whoa, grab ledge. Named after PC Chris, who is then named after his hometown, lots of named afters here, PC Chris never really claimed to be the first one to discover the tech, but he sure as hell was the first one to use at the top level in the ways that he did. In the early days of Melee, people really had the ability to completely have their own thing. This still absolutely exists with the playstyles of Melee, but in a world with undiscovered techniques and unconventional playstyles, you could really have your own brand of play all to yourself. In early 2006 to 2007, PC Chris used the PC drop so much that other players definitely took note. While the tech will be forever tied to the player, it was starting to be learned and implemented by not only PC Chris. PC drop is still to this day considered an optimal way to grab the ledge and is practically a staple to learn with certain characters in this game. While the idea of players creating their own branded techniques may seem like something reserved for only 2006 Melee, this still absolutely exists throughout local scenes, even if they're not as well known as PC Drop. Every local region has these players that completely have their own brand of Melee. That one Sheik that down smashes you over and over again, that one Puff player that rolls out on you off stage, that one Fox that can triple shine your shield but still run into every single one of Peach's down smashes. These players have signature moves that help give local scenes its personality and depth, and moves like PC Drop are the highest level of that feeling and carrying on someone else's legacy through your own play. Number 7, Thunder's Combo. In 2005, Titman created this edge guard. While you might think that this was indicative to what to expect from 2005 Melee, in 2005, Thunder's, a Japanese Melee player, created this combo. The Thunder's Combo refers to a fox shining another character and then immediately jabbing the miss tech, commonly followed by an up air or up smash. This technique wasn't just a flashy option sometimes used in 2005, but also an option consistently used by Fox players still in 2020, and we ain't stopping there. Everyone wants to be known as the cool player. Everyone wants everyone else to be like, oh hell yeah, they play dope. Flat out, being offensive and aggressive is what gets you the cool points in this game. And we don't have time to cover that whole thing. While some players have easily ignored the fake cool dude points to achieve their real goals, some don't. 
Some people really do play this game because of that feeling of hitting that one insane combo video clip, and even if they've shifted their focus from swag to results, that combo is still the backbone of why they play. Regardless if you've watched a single one of their VODs or not, Thunders will forever be known as that cool and flashy player, because the combo that they popularized is. A ton of the older information on the Japanese local melee scene has either been lost to time or never really been fully translated and documented in English, but in his time in the early scene in Japan, he was known as an extremely fast fox player who competed with Masashi as the best fox player in Japan and was one of the first players to double shine an actual opponent instead of a CPU. Even all the way back in 2005, the first signs of 20xx and optimal play were being pushed and the Thunders combo has held up 15 years later. Since 2007, Thunders has occasionally returned and occasionally dropped off every once in a while, and has since changed their tags to Kodo, most notably getting 19th on Japan's 2019 Melee Power Ranking. Hell yeah. For pushing towards the world where we can hit that insane combo every time in tournament, and leaving a legacy inspiring others to do cool shit in Melee, shouts out to Thunders for making the person missing their tech look like an absolute f***ing idiot. Speaking of, number 6, the sacred combo. Have you ever gotten completely f***ed in this game? Like, not optimally beaten, like every tech, every role, they have been there before and they are meeting you with an unnecessary option there. That is the Sacred Combo. The Sacred Combo is comboing me into a Falcon Punch. While some people might call the combo different strings, as long as you get there with a knee and a punch, it is considered a Sacred Combo. The Sacred Combo is reserved for training mode, TV number 19s, not recorded setups, or playing against your friend who doesn't know what DI is. Or smash the record. Not even the fact that when you miss it, you die, the fact that if you miss it, you are so lame. A sacred combo, in our opinion, is only a sacred combo if you get it in the first attempt, and if you die and miss it, just pretend like you accidentally hit B. On July of 2007, Court posted this combo on a thread that they titled Sacred Combo with an extremely accurate description. Cord was an immensely impressive player, and one that we tried to cover at least part of his story in our 10 old school players who influence characters playstyles video. So be sure to check out that, or just type Court into your YouTube search bar, because Court should always be shown the respect that they deserve for their accomplishments, and they are from New England, so bonus points there. While nowadays not always tied to the player who created it, the sacred combo is the epitome of what Court's playstyle looked like on a good day. Court completely up the other player. Number 5, Randall. On July 26, 2006, a melee player known as Espeon aka Austin P posted on Smashboards detailing the Yoshi story cloud timing. This player, who clearly put a ton of work in trying to figure out this seemingly uncharted territory, has nothing to do with what we're about to talk about. No, instead we scroll six comments down and we find this comment by a Canadian smasher, Fast Fox, who says, quote, I've officially dubbed this cloud Randall. From now on, everybody must refer to the cloud on Yoshi's story as Randall. Thank you. That's it. The whole entire community was just like, oh, yeah, that's a good bit. I'm also going to call him Randall. In 2006, Fast Fox made a funny Smashboards post, and in 2020, every single person in this community refers to the cloud on Yoshi's story as Randall because that joke is still kind of funny. Number four, Tomahawk. Could hearing our undescriptive turn for the first time alienate someone watching? Yeah. Could hearing our undescriptive terms for the first time make someone want to dive deeper into a community using 15 year old phrases? Totally. And I'm sure plenty of you watching could even recall a similar feeling. Knowing the language of Melee is a real connection between you and the other people in this community that can mean so much more than just a Twitch stream or a YouTube video. And seeing that from the outside can absolutely pique your interest. For the people that follow it, being in on the inside joke that's as simple as M2K hates getting wobbled or hearing someone reference your favorite unranked Fox player can add a level to your viewing experience. Your favorite Melee commentators are at least partially your favorite 
because they sound similar to how you and your friends talk about melee. Tomahawk is the act of empty short hopping and then usually doing something like tomahawk grab or tomahawk f smash. In 2006, a dude who totally might be a dick based on his Smashboards post showed up to FC6, a melee major at the time. This person was 5150, a player known for their low tiers and being that loud guy at the tournament. But at FC6, 5150 was playing Roy and was apparently, you guessed it, empty hop short hopping and forward smashing and calling it the tomahawk. But not only was he just offhandedly saying the word tomahawk to his friends, apparently he entered the major as Cherokee Warrior, blasting a metal song that may or may not be by Youngvay Malmsteen, and yelling tomahawk every time he tomahawked. It's worth noting that the original tomahawk specifically referred to Roy F smashing after the empty hop, but the term has now been adapted by all characters and the scene as a whole. And also worth noting, the term very well could have been ripped from a basketball term where you pull back when dunking, but we're not sure on that last part. 5150 wouldn't hang around the melee scene that much longer, and judging by the fact that he was server banned by Smashboard admins 10 years ago, probably didn't get along great with everyone, but you know, other people were also banned by Smashboards. Tomahawk is truly just a somewhat funny, probably slightly obnoxious at the time, joke. And that joke has stuck in our lexicon to this very day. The fact that we still use Tomahawk in 2020 might be because someone was at the right place at the right time, but this was really just a joke from 2006. Number three, No Johns. It's kind of weird to think about now, but there was truly a time where No Johns was possibly more popular than the melee scene itself. Whether it's Nintendo trying to act like they've been a part of the competitive community every single time they release a new Smash game, or pro Halo players using the term while sharing the stage with Melee in the MLG days, No Johns really had completely eclipsed the player it came from. Sometime around 2002 to even 2001, in classic fashion that is still true to this day, a Smash player was complaining and making excuses. That player was Turbo Ace, aka John who is a member of the legendary Crystal City crew out of Texas, known as one of the strongest melee crews in its competitive infancy. The fact that you can't search Crystal City crew on YouTube and get great results is a shame, and we would love to be the first ones to try and alleviate that problem. Alongside old school legends like Caveman, Zulu, Smiles, and Rob Money, the Crystal City crew really had some of the best melee players in the South all on one squad. But Turbo Ace's legacy would somehow outlive all of theirs. Turbo Ace complained about unnecessary things such as his controller feeling weird today, not eating enough, and just generally making excuses about why he lost so his friends made a joke about it and said it at Smash tournaments. But remembering the Crystal City crew solely for no Johns is completely unfair to this crew's accomplishments. The Crystal City crew were notably loud as f and had a slew of other slang terms. Being one of the first crews to really talk sh and yell for their homies during bracket, they surely weren't loved by everyone, especially Matt Deasy, but they would prove that they were not just loud voices at the tournament. Ken's famed win over Reciferous at TG4 was absolutely the sign of a new era, but a much less covered detail was that two weeks before, at most one in Texas, Reciferous would travel down to the south, and before Ken defeated him, Zulu of the Crystal City crew defeated Reciferous in Grand Finals. Zulu, along with playing a mean Falco in 2002, was credited with creating Jigglypuff's Wall of Pain technique. The Mo series would become an extremely important tournament to Texas Melee, and more importantly, the start of local and major Melee tournaments. Most 1 was truly the start of something, and Most 3 would be one of the first tournaments considered a major in Melee's lifetime, and a pivotal one for the scene storylines. While the Crystal City crew would find themselves in California at a Melee tournament at one of the earlier Tournament Go events, Matt Deasy and others would take a liking to the No John slang that would quickly spread. 
When their crew, let alone Turbo Ace himself, saw the widespread use of no jaunts on Smash boards, they were extremely surprised to see it being used not just by Texas players, but as the scene as a whole. The Crystal City's crew's terms did not end at no jaunts, having other phrases like lay low that meant something good or a dope combo, up hits and down hits, and a ton more that unfortunately weren't as documented. No Johns has translations in so many languages, applying it to their own scene's biggest complainer, and here's a list of all the ones that we could find. A big shout out to Scav for not only making this entry 15 times better with an offhanded Reddit comment, but also importantly for being the head TO of the most series. While No Johns is undoubtedly the biggest piece that will be remembered from the Crystal City crew, we wanted to take this time to really give props to some of these terms that are cemented in our scene because the accomplishments of people like the Crystal City crew do not end at No Johns. Number 2, Gentlemen. Tournament Go 6. A staple of the most important melee tournaments ever, and if you want to learn more about this time period, run some of these videos that we've done after, but what's relevant here is that this was the first true meeting ground for the top players of the melee scene. More than 112 people traveled from all over the world to not only try to prove who was the best, but come together as a community for the first time. Two Falcons were sitting down at a setup, both legends from this community. One was Isaiah, a player who needs no introduction and was a founding member in Melee's competitive launch. The other was a Japanese Falcon player traveling with Captain Jack who had changed their tag multiple times. While the two were playing friendlies, someone had walked up behind them and asked if they canceled the triple jab. Isaiah would tell the person asking the question to use AAZ, while the Japanese player would say that you just use AAA with precise timing. What followed would be a triple jab cancel match, equivalent to a rhythm game guitar hero battle, with both players attempting to do as many do do do's as possible without getting the faded do 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 do. After many successful attempts, only one Falcon player would be able to claim victory, and Isaiah had failed the technique, and then the original person who asked the question proclaimed, It's the gentleman! named after the tag of the Japanese player. We highlight this entry and created this video just to really show how deep Melee goes, even into something like the phrases that we say. There is totally a world where we could have called this technique the Isaiah, but Isaiah did not win the Captain Falcon Pokemon Stadium minigame, so it's called Gentleman across Smash games. The Falcon player the tech is named after is more commonly known by as Kind nowadays. In Japan, the technique has kind of always been referred to as the translation of Mock Punch Cancel. But Kind's W has held up in the words of any Falcon player overseas. And like, other plays, whatever. Gentle Minning is a staple technique of Falcon's repertoire, and unlike the other terms it shares this list with, there really hasn't ever been a push for Gentlemen to be out of the picture because of how ingrained it is to the Smash scene in general, and it was just a Captain Falcon trial in 2004 at one tournament for probably like two minutes once. And our favorite technique or phrase used in Super Smash Bros. Melee, Dave's stupid rule. Tournament Go 6 may have invented a commonly used Falcon technique, but earlier Tournament Go's are credited with a much bigger and impactful Melee phrase. Tournament Go in 2002 is commonly referred to as the second grassroots tournament ever. And at that tournament, a player named Scamp entered and got fifth. Scamp would go on to work with the TG staff shortly after, helping to create and run brackets. Doing small volunteer work for the following third iteration, by TG4, Scamp was, in his words, the modern equivalent of a TO helping out. At TG4, all stages were legal except for two. The general consensus for your starting stage was to either go to FD or hit that fat random button. At TG4, Ken bodied everyone. Being known for being extremely strong on the dumb, flat, long, stupid stage, Ken's strategy was A, win game one, probably on FD, B, who cares about game two because like 18 out of 24 stages are fucking miserable, C, go back to the stage that I won game one on. 
While Scamp was very aware that Ken should have been beating everyone at the time, the idea of only seeing two out of the 24 stages and a lack of different strategies would create an idea in Scamp's head. And as you might be able to guess, Scamp's real name was in fact Dave. Before a small get together hosted by Matt Deasy, Scamp suggested a rule. You are not allowed to go to the last stage you went on. Matt Deasy was a fan of the rule, and along with implementing it into their fests, he announced that TG5 would be using, quote, Dave's stupid rule. At different times, the rule has been mistakenly credited to DA Dave, but hilariously enough, after reaching out to Scamp directly, we learned that that was partially because he thought it was really funny to tell people that DA Dave did it. And like the naming of the rule, that is really funny. <laughs> this rule would be changed to not being allowed to go to any stage you want on, with Sheridan saying things like, you should never ever use the original rule. And somehow the, the rule that we now use is called Dave's stupid rule, but the, the original rule is called modified, even though it's clearly the newer one that was modified, whatever. Anyway, Dave's stupid rule is in the rule set at every event in Melee and even Smash communities unanimously. And if you're not using it, you probably don't know what you're doing. Now not only a part of Smash games, even the rule set in Competitive Catherine has listed Dave's stupid rule. Scamp's achievements in the Melee scene do not end at rule suggestions at TG events, and he's been the head TO almost every year for Melee at EVO, which are consistently some of the biggest Melee events that we've ever had as a community. Scamp helped out and was a volunteer in some of Melee's most important moments starting out, and he has been a head TO in some of Melee's most important moments growing up. Scamp has a real-life stamp on this scene, and his rule will be explained to people at their first tournaments for as long as time. Because if you ask us, that rule will be forever called Dave's Stupid Rule. Even if your rule seems kind of stupid, even if your combo seems impossible to perform, even if your friends are just making fun of you because you complain too much, we all add something to this community. We are a grassroots scene that has existed since 2002 and we will exist far beyond 2022. But with those decades of endurances comes the people in our past who were pillars to its success. Everyone can't host the biggest tournament ever or completely redefine a character's playstyle, but you know what you can do? Try. You can try to host an event. You can try to become the best player in your region. You can try to discover never before seen tech, but by trying, you are a contributing member of this scene. Everyone watching can give something to this community, even if it's in ways that you would have never thought could have made an impact. The success of this scene does not rely on any one TO, commentator, or player. It relies on you to actually give a shit about the people surrounding you and the people who have came before you to create a community that you want to be a part of. The people mentioned in this video have created phrases that have completely taken on a life of their own and we are happy to retrace the steps on how we got to where we're at. Whether it's directly in game or something out of it, we have seen so much added to the community over its course of 20 years because Super Smash Bros. Melee is the best f***ing video game ever made. Thank you for watching Austin Melee. Thank you, person who watches to the end of the YouTube video, for being a part of the Melee community and contributing to a better scene. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. Melee content can have a hard time popping off on here, and we will constantly go to war with the YouTube algorithm, but having a couple soldiers on the Austin Melee side doesn't hurt. If you want to contribute to making Austin Melee videos better, get access to unseen, behind the scenes stuff, or just make Patty's life a little bit easier, be sure to throw a couple bones over our way and head to patreon.com slash Austin Melee, and helps us continue to make the weekly top 10s you know and love. The biggest thank you possible to all the Patreons for killing it already, and we'll catch you in the next video. So bye, peace out, talk to you later, hasta mañana, or next week, I don't know how to say a week in Spanish, goodbye.